Hi everybody! I hope you are all doing well. I'm so impressed with how great you guys have been doing with all of your work. I'm getting a lot of really good work from all of you. And uh, yeah, if you need any help, please do let us know. We're here to make sure that you guys are all um, set up and everything is going well. Um, I know a lot of you found this um, White Rose work today um, quite tricky. So I thought I would go through it and just kind of give you some quick, quick little hints as to which ones we were finding a little bit hard. So um, let's take a look at 1C here. So I'm just going to get my pen. If I've got two tenths and I want to change that into hundredths, we need to think about how do we go from 10 to 100. So to go from 10 to 100, we've got to multiply by 10, which means that that top number there also needs to be multiplied by 10. And 2 times 10 is going to give us 20. Now, if I have 0 0.2, remember that that first place value after the decimal is going to be our tenths place. So if I've got a two in the tenths place, that means I have two tenths. And if I have two tenths, I need to again think about how do I go from 10 to 100. And to go from 10 to 100, I have to multiply by 10. The other thing I could think about is if I have 0 0.2, I know that the next place value is going to be my hundredths place value. So if I put my zero on the end, I now have 20 hundredths. Okay, and that's going to help us answer these questions down here. So eight tenths, we've got eight, whoops, 80 hundredths. Okay, I'm not going to try to write. It's just not going to go well. Uh, most of you did really, really well with all of these questions anyway. So if I've gone through 1C, hopefully that will make 2 a little bit easier for you. Again, think about your place values and where those denominators are coming from. Okay, remember your denominator is your bottom number of your fraction. Okay, so next we have a grid. So if we look at our grid, we've got a 100 grid. And in this first one, we've got 40 out of 100, okay? And we could also write it, not 106, but 100. Um, but we could also write it as we have four out of 10 rows, right? So I could have 40 out of 100, or I could have four out of 10. Now, this one over here, I've only got four out of 100, right? So if we think about that from our place value, right, four tenths, right, is going to be 40 one hundredths, whereas 0 0.04 is just having four hundredths. So that is why 0 0.04, or four out of 100, is going to be less than 40 out of 100, okay? And same sort of idea with question four, but we're using, remember, our alligator is going to eat our bigger number. So this is our less than, there's our greater than. I, uh, I did those backwards. I obviously meant to, uh, oops, that is not our greater than gator. That was just another less than gator. There's our greater than gator. Okay, or equal to, okay. Uh, continuing linear sequences. So if I have one tenth, remember these ones are all out of 100, so I've got 10 out of 100. So then I've got 11 out of 100, 12 out of 100, and we're gonna keep going, 13. I'm never going to be able to write this, sorry. Okay, so 13 out of 100, 14 out of 100, and then 15 out of 100. Now, the one next, so B, is a little bit trickier. So we're going to have to think about what would 5 tenths be as a fraction out of 100. 
So I'm going to need to multiply the numerator and the denominator by 10 so that I can have 50 out of 100. So then if I think about how do I go from 35 to 50 to 65, I'm adding 15 each time, which means that my next value is going to be plus 15, so 80 out of 100. And if I think about another way I could write that, I could write it as 8 8 over 10, okay? And then if I keep going, I'm gonna end up with 95 over 100, and then this one's going to be an improper or top-heavy fraction. We're going to end up with 110 out of 100, or 1 and 1 tenth. Okay, the third one there, so if we think about 4 tenths as a decimal, I'm gonna have 0 0.4. And remember, we can always put a zero on the end to keep ourselves having the same number of values. So if I think about that, I would think of it as covering up that zero and thinking of it as 40. So then I'm gonna to have to take away 11 to get to 29. So I'm gonna keep taking away 11 so that I end up with my decimals. So 29 take away 11 is going to be um, 18, so I'm going to have 0 0.18. Then if I take away another 11, right, I'm going to have, and again, this is 11 hundredths, right? So I'm going to have 0 0.07 because I've only got 7 left, right? And then I'm going to go into the negatives and I'm going to have negative 0 0.04. Whew, that was a tricky one. Okay, now, these ones were the ones where we were starting to have a little bit of, of trouble, which is absolutely fine. So three quarters or four fifths, remember for these questions, we're gonna need a common denominator. So what I would come up with is 20, because I know that four times five gives me 20. So that's gonna be in both the fours and the fives times tables. So I can have 15 over 20, right? or 12 out of 20. So that means that three quarters is going to be the larger value, okay? Because when we find equivalent denominators, so common denominators, then that fraction is gonna be bigger, okay? Right, so question five, it tells us that one fifth, so the fraction one fifth is equal to the decimal 0 0.2. So if I have six fifths, I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six. So I've got one and one fifth, and I know one fifth is 0.2. So I'm gonna put 1.2. Now your two doesn't need to be as far away as mine does, okay? Now, nine fifths. So again, let's go through our number line. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So if I wrote that as a fraction, I would have one and four fifths. And when I go up in my decimal, I go 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8. So I've got 1.8, okay? 0 0.8, so this time we're gonna count along the top. So 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, which means that we have four fifths. And the very last one, we've got 1.6. So if I count along, so I'm gonna start right at one, 1, 1.2, 1 1.4, 1.6. 1 so I've got one and three fifths, or if I count them all together, I've got eight fifths, okay? Right, which is greater, 15 and three quarters or 15 and seven tenths? Now. This question is super similar to this question, but they put a 15 in front of us just to throw it off a little bit, okay? So let's think about which one's bigger, three quarters or seven tenths. Now, I'm gonna use that same fraction of 20, 
so that I can find out what the equivalent, or sorry, the common denominators are gonna be. So I'm gonna times this one by two, and I end up with 14 out of 20. Okay, and this one we're gonna multiply by five. Okay, and we end up with 15 over 20. So that means that three quarters is going to be our bigger number. So same thing as if we had three quarters and seven tenths, right? 15 and three quarters is also going to be bigger than 15 and seven tenths, okay? So that's how we can do it for six. So anytime it's asking us to find which fraction is bigger or smaller, or comparing fractions, we always have to have a common denominator. Okay, and remember that denominator is our bottom number. Okie dokie. So second question, here's a number line from zero to one. Now we know that from zero to A, okay, is 0 0.2. Now remember we said 0 0.2 is the same as one fifth, okay. And then we also know that one quarter okay, is from one to B. So if I had this fraction here, it would be three quarters. So write a fraction with a denominator of 10, which could go after B on the number line. So if we think about, we need a number that would go after B on the number line. So what about nine tenths? So if I think about nine tenths as a decimal, I've got 0 0.9. Now, if we think about one quarter as a decimal, we know it's 0 0.25, which means that B here as a decimal would be 0 0.75. So as long as my value right, in, in, as a decimal is greater than 0 0.75, then my answer is correct. Okay, so 9 tenths would work. We could also use 8 tenths. Okay, really great job, guys. Now, write a fraction with a denominator of 100, which could go before A on the number line. So let's think about our decimals again. So we know that this value is 0 0.20, okay? So 20 hundredths. Now, if we wanted a fraction with a denominator of 100, it could literally be any number that's smaller than 20. So I could have eight over 100. I could have 18 over 100. I could have 19 over 100. All of those would come before this point on my number line. Obviously that line was supposed to go over A, sorry. Okay, now write three fractions that could be between A and B on a number line. So again, I would think about it in terms of my decimals. So if I've got 0 0.2 and 0 0.75, I can choose any numbers between 20 and 75, 75, sorry, and I can have those as values out of 100, okay? Now, just quickly, because my recording is gonna cut off at 15 minutes. So let's um, skip this one. So again, you could have any numbers between 20 and 75 over 100, okay? But not equal to 20 over 75 or, or sorry, 20 over 100 or 75 out of 100, okay? So it's anything between those values. Now. Tick the expressions that are equivalent, so the same as four fifths of x. So if we think about it, x plus four fifths, that's not going to be equivalent. Okay, so that's not right. 0.4x, now we know 0.2 is equal to one fifth. So this would be equal to one fifth x, but not four fifth x. So it's not going to help us. Now, 4x over 5, so that means we need to multiply by 4 and then we need to divide by 5. That one is going to work. This one is not going to work because 0 0.45 is not the same as 4 fifths. This one is not the same because we're subtracting 4 fifths. This one is the same because if I have four groups of 0.2, that's going to give me 0.8. Perfect. 
Perfect. I just made my time limit. Okay. Hope you guys are all doing really well. I miss you loads and we'll talk soon. Bye.